Hi, my name is Kim McQuarrie and I'm the Director of Community Programming and the Co-Director of the Innovation Labs here at the Dali Museum. We're happy to welcome you here today for the first episode of our new video podcast, Follow the Tangent, Archives, Art and Anecdotes. In this ongoing series, we're going to be delving into our archives and examining a different artifact every week in order to see how this often invisible but important part of the museum really illuminates art history. And in this case, the history of Dali and the other artists working with him contemporarily. Today, we're going to start this journey by thinking a little bit about what archives are and what they do with the help of my amazing colleague, Shana Buckles Harkness, who is going to tell us a little bit about the archives and about what she does here. So welcome to the podcast, Shana. Thanks, Kim. Good to be here. Yeah, we're super excited. So why don't we just start off um, with you telling us a little bit about what it is that you do here at the museum. Okay, so I am the librarian, the archivist, and I'm the collection manager here at the museum. So I manage the library, uh, mainly the books, um, the archives, which we're in the archival room now, and the collection manager. I work with the museum's database. Um, so tracking any movement, doing image rights for our collection. So that's basically what a collection manager does. And I've been doing that here um, for almost seven years now. We're so we're lucky to have you. Um, those are all really important things. Now, you said the archival and obviously the podcast um, is follow the tangent and thinking about archives and art. So maybe we could start out with thinking about what is a definition of archives? Okay, so there's a couple different meanings. Um, an archive singular, singular can be the physical building of which I'm in now. I'm in an archive, which is a physical repository that holds historical records, either for an individual or an organization for its entire lifetime. Um, archives, plural, can mean the items that are in that archive room or repository. Um, also for us an archive, archives include special collections. Mm -hmm. Here we combine those two terms. Um, other museums, other libraries, they separate those terms, but I'm going to use them somewhat interchangeably and a special collection could be um, a certain selection of books. Uh, it could be someone's personal collection in their entirety. Here it's Dolly's uh, full breadth of exhibition catalogs. That is a special collection. Um, photo binders. That is a special collection. So it won't be just historical records, meaning board minutes and things like that. It's a culmination of these two terms, archive and special collections. Yeah, and so this idea that there are these special collections, there are these historical documents, and obviously I see a lot of things there kind of behind you. And so how did all of this get started? I mean, now we have all of these items, but what was the real origin point for the Dali archives and special collections? So this was all in the beginning. It was collected by A. Reynolds and Eleanor Morse, whom are our, who are our benefactors of this museum. So they started a relationship with Salvador Dali and Gala Dali. They started purchasing paintings and drawings. And along with that, the Morrises decided to preserve um, any information about those purchases, um, any correspondence that they may have had with gallery owners. So they, they started in that way and then it kind of branched off into, um, they wanted Dali to be seen in more of an academic light mm -hmm. here in the United States. So the Morris's intentions were to do research on his works, um, themes of his works. Um, so they started collecting what little there was at the time 
essays about Dali, newspaper clippings. Um, so we have newspaper clippings from the early 20s, even to the present. We do it digitally now. Um, he also was attempting to recreate Salvador Dali's personal library in Spain. So those books, Mr. Morrison, we see in correspondence and in records that he was at the time writing to these booksellers because each time he visited um, the Dalis in Spain, he would start writing down titles that he would see. Mm -hmm. So he was look, searching the world for these books, you know, same edition and all of that. So he was trying to recreate Dali's personal library. So there's a lot of different uh, aspects going on with how it started and what it is to uh, our museum. Yeah, and so the Morrises in creating this collection, as you said, were thinking about how they might better elucidate um, Dali's works and a dearth of academic activity and then at the same time document the collection that they'd put together. So if the Morrises using it for those purposes was the origin, how has that shifted and changed now to um, how people are using it? Who's using it, I guess, would be the best place to start. Who is coming and using the archives now? Well, in a way, some of that we're still um using it as the Morris's original intent of tracking the story of each individual work that we own because he wasn't successful all the way. So we continue on that journey um, with that work, still gathering what we have, but maybe acquiring others. And that leads me into who uses it. Most of the time it's staff from curatorial the curatorial department here. Um, we could be investigating uh, an exhibit that Dolly had in 1925. So they need to come here and access those records. We have a physical copy. And now in 2020, um, we are digitizing so they can also access them digitally, which helps with our other users who may not necessarily come to the physical location. Mm -hmm. um, they may email me and say, I'm a curator from such and such museum and I need information, I'm doing some research on this. Do you happen to have an exhibition catalog or do you have any correspondence? So we have a lot of curators from other museums mm -hmm. that use our materials, whether it's in person or not. We also have researchers, academic researchers. This could be PhD level, all the way down to even advanced placement and IB high school students that have accessed our collection. Um, so we, and in the past seven years, I've seen an increase in use. And I think a lot of that has to do with creating finding aids and more digital sources where they can see on our website, but then it leads them to the physical item and whether they can come and see it or if I can give them a digital copy of that item. Now, in all of the seven years of working with curators, both here and at other museums in the US and abroad, working with researchers across all levels and now even the general public who can access it through our website at thedully.org. What is maybe the strangest or the most interesting question that anybody has ever asked you? Because librarians always get the best questions. Yeah, um, one comes to mind and it was not, uh, I'll just say it wasn't an academic question um, kind of caught me off guard, but here at the Dolly Museum, we're, we're ready for that. Um, and it, it was a question regarding, did Dolly believe in reincarnation or was he reincarnated himself? Mm -hmm. um, if so, do you have any information or are there any sources that could 
lead me to what he was thinking about that topic. Um, so that was definitely an interesting one. And it took me some time. Not every, not every request I can fully grant and give a great explanation because sometimes we just don't know. And who knows, maybe through the years as I'm looking through and studying, maybe I'll come across more information on that. Well, I mean, that's certainly an esoteric question uh, about reincarnation. And that kind of points to, as you've been suggesting with some of the other um, references you've made to researchers and scholars, we've kind of been circling around this idea um, through who uses it but thinking about, okay, well, what's the what? Like, what purpose or what purpose does the archive serve, especially in the life of this museum? Um, you know, archives are so often invisible parts of museums, and yet I feel like those invisible parts often play a much more important role than people understand. So what is the purpose of the archive and the life of the museum, and why is it so important to have it? So we play a supporting role to the museum's mission. That is our overall, that is our role to play the supporting role. And that mission is to preserve the legacy of Salvador Dali. And so the archive takes it one step further and we also preserve the legacy of the museum itself. So we are constantly in support of attaining that preservation, showing people aspects of the legacy through the items that they may see here. Um, curatorial staff, we're constantly working on um, making additions to the knowledge we already know. Um, and that's pivotal to our mission here at the museum because we want to preserve the legacy we want to share with the community, whether that be county level, state level, worldwide level. And the archives play a supporting role. And we also, every department in this museum, some time or other will ask me a question or will need information in this room. Um, it could be events where they need an accurate portrayal of a certain time period that they may be re recreating the atmosphere of that event. And so they need hard evidence that we may have here. It's marketing. We help the marketing department facilities, even facilities, because we have old plans here of our old museum or parts of the plans of the new museum. So we really, we have our fingers in every department here at the museum. Yeah, that's, I think that's part of what is so cool about the archives is it's something that the average visitor doesn't get to see because it's um, on a floor that's not accessible to museum um, visitors, but it plays such a pivotal role in all those ways you know, that you just mentioned. Um, now we've referenced a little bit now of thinking about historical documents and plans and photos and catalogs, um, but I thought maybe we might think about something maybe more unexpected. What's something that lives in archives and special collections that might be more unexpected? I'm actually going to show you a few items briefly because... Oh, I love show and tell. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites here, and I'll zoom in for everyone, a Dolly signed tennis ball. Um, Dolly himself did not play tennis, but the Morses were involved in tennis. So um, Reynolds Morris asked him to sign a bunch of tennis balls and they live here in our special collection. Um, Another fun one, and I would be remiss not to show it. This is kind of the nerdy side, um, but I'm going to go ahead. This here, and I'm going to zoom in. This is a very rare Japanese book on Salvador Dali from 1939. 
So even back in 1939, um, the Japanese were interested in surrealism and Dali. This is fascinating to the curatorial team, which will lead us to more research in the future. And one more item here, probably not expected at all. And it's kind of hard to tell through the computer, but this is a beautiful crystal perfume bottle. We have several of these in our special collection. This is based off the original um, perfume bottle that was designed in collaboration, Dali and Scaparelli in the 30s. This is a later edition, commercial edition. You can't find them anymore. But um, this was based on one of Dali's drawings. So it just really shows how Dali used every medium. He, the only one that we don't know that he worked with was photography. But here we see he's designing commercial items, perfume bottles. You know, we also, and I didn't bring it here, but we have ties, neckties. Um, just many fascinating things live in this repository. Yeah, and I think that is uh, just for me, the real point of archive special collections research. It's illuminating somebody like Dali. Um, we think by going to this museum or by going to his museum, um, in Spain or by seeing some of his works in other museums that we really know him and yet as you're suggesting There's all of these things under the surface about Dali as a designer about Dali in fashion about Dali in the media about Dali hanging around with his friends signing tennis balls yeah. um, <laughs> That you know, you would never find out if you didn't have something like the archives and special collections yeah, and it gives a, um, especially for an archivist, and if there are any archivists out there listening, they know it's, sometimes it could be a very intimate experience because you may be working with um, letters. And we do have two volumes of correspondence between the Dalis and um, Mr. and Mrs. Morse. And it's, um, it's really fascinating. And sometimes you feel like you're intruding on this personal friendship because you do have access to these letters, but um, it's just a wonderful feeling to have access to these letters and then also potentially use them in um, future research. Yeah, and with that, you know, as you're saying, you kind of get this intimate view and sometimes yeah uncomfortably intimate but with access to all these things like the letters and where the works have come from and all of these catalogs and all of these really interesting objects what would you say to kind of take us out today was one thing like one cool anecdote or one cool insight or one cool discovery um, that you have come across in doing research in the archives and special collections? Um, I'm going to focus on one thing and I'll just hold this up. This is a photo of Salvador Dali and Harpo Marx. Mm -hmm. And here in our archive, we actually own a film script that Dali wrote for the Marx Brothers. Oh, cool. It was, and this just, you know, it led me into um, really looking at his relationship with the Marx Brothers, because again, he had said that they are truly surrealist. And then to stumble upon this script and to read it, it's in French, um, to read the script, stumble upon it, and it's from 1937. And we still have the script and to know that it was intended for the Marx brothers to produce and star on star in. Um, it's just little things like that. Give me giddy. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, I mean, as you're talking about it, I'm like, wow, I wish that movie had gotten made. I would love to have seen that. I, 
hey, maybe one day that, you know, it happened with Destino, they ended up finishing it. Maybe one day um, they could finish this and actually produce this film. Oh, that would be awesome. Well, I really want to thank you, Shana, for joining us and telling us a little bit about the archives part of Archives Art and Anecdotes. Yes, of course. I'm happy to do it anytime. I'm glad everyone could um, have a sneak peek of my personal space every day at the museum. Um, and if any questions, if anyone has any questions out there, you can email me library at the dolly.org and I'll be happy to answer them. Excellent. That's awesome. And I hope you mean it about always being available because we're hoping to invite you back for our next podcast where we're going to dig into a really interesting mystery um, that Shana has been on the trail of solving for three years. So we're going to dig into what instigated this and what trail she has been on. And hopefully, maybe, somebody who's watching this podcast um, might have the missing link that she's yeah. looking for. So until next time, thanks from Follow the Tangent. Thank you.